Hey, this is the Black Belt Panda, and welcome back to the Redstone Bunker. In this episode, we're going to build an automatic wheat, carrot, and potato farm. Let's get started. So my first attempt at making this automatic farm looks like this here. Now, the way this works is you come up here with some seeds, grab some here, you flick this lever, you stand here and you hold down right click. And as you can see, I'm getting wheat fairly quickly, not the fastest. But the way that this works here is we have our input here, the lever. When that's off, it's actually turning the redstone on, powering all of this here because we have a clock running here. And with all of this power, the clock can't actually, well, run anything. For the clock, we're using two observers, and we're running the signal from the clock into a piston, which is down here. You can barely see it. There it is, the piston holding the farmland up above. That turns on and off, which causes this farmland to move up and down. There's some water behind it to keep it uh, fertilized, moisturized, whatever you want to call it. And these dispensers here are full of bone meal to bone meal the crop. And what happens is every time this block goes down, when it's pulled down by the piston, the wheat breaks off and you collect it. Every time it comes back up and you're holding down right click, you plant a new seed and these dispensers all bone meal it. Pretty simple. I'm going to show you the various mechanics here. Dispensers, if you weren't already aware, are able to not only just, well, dispense items, but use certain items. They can fire arrows, uh, they can throw splash potions, and they can bone meal crops. So if I were to put a seed here and press this button, as you can see, it's full of bone meal. It is bone mealing that crop for me. Very useful feature. As for the observer clock, observers, what they'll do is they detect an update in front of them, like a block being placed or broken and then they emit a redstone pulse out the back as you can see here this also works of course with crops like here we have some uh, seeds here if I bone meal it every stage creates a redstone pulse out the back and so by putting a an observer facing another observer when one observer detects that this observer is placed it'll submit a redstone signal out the back uh, and that'll update this observer, which this one then detects, emits a redstone signal out the back, updates, this one then detects, and it just goes back and forth over and over, pretty much forever, and we have clock outputs on both sides. Very handy. So all we did was we made that clock, we hooked it up to this redstone signal, and we hooked it down to the, uh, the piston down there, and this redstone up here operates the dispenser, so if I pull this lever, you can see it in action back here, activating all of the dispensers, as well as that piston down there. Very simple. But, it's too slow, right? It's too slow. So, I played around a little bit with some various uh, different ways to accomplish this. And if you have a crop in a dark area like this, crops need light to grow. If you plant a seed, right, it'll, it'll break off as soon as it's updated, because there's not enough light for it to grow. So when it receives a random game update or you force update it. Uh, in this case, we're force updating it with an observer. So when this observer sees that I planted a seed, this redstone on top activates. It updates this whole block, which indirectly updates this block down here that the seed or the crop is sitting inside. And it's like, hey, I don't have enough light. I'm breaking. And it breaks. Pretty simple, right? Well, this here, the redstone on top that the observer is powering runs over on top of each of these stone blocks which are on top of the dispensers full of bone meal and when the redstone activates it of course indirectly powers the dispenser down below causing it to bone meal the crop it doesn't work on the very first one but it does work on everyone after so if you hold down right click you can see if i get closer here you can see how fast we're getting wheat from this way faster than the other one but there's a problem with this one, right? Uh, you can't build it flush into a wall. If I try to place blocks here, yeah, that's, that's a problem, right? So I tweaked around with the design a little bit, and I discovered this little bug here, which is going to let us make it even smaller. So if I trigger a block update in front of this observer, it's going to emit a redstone pulse out the back. We don't need that lever. And that's going to travel up the observer here. 
and power this dispenser. I filled it with stone. This dispenser down here is filled with sandstone. So if I place a block here, it should spit out stone, but no sandstone because this one is not connected, right? So place a block, we get stone. Break a block, we get stone. No sandstone at all from this guy. But there seems to be a little glitch here with the redstone, a little bug, and we're going to take advantage of that. If I place a block and break it fast enough, this guy spits out sandstone. What on earth? You see that? If I do it fast enough, this guy activates. I'm not sure why, right? This seems to be a glitch or a bug or maybe something to do with quasi-connectivity. I don't really know, <laughs> but it works. And what's cool about the observer here is... When we're using it here, let me see if I can get up high enough so you can see. You see that redstone pulse up top? You see how fast that is? That's about the right speed we need. So I modified the design with the observer in the back and the redstone feeding the top dispenser and the other two dispensers on the sides. And now the two dispensers on the sides will activate because this guy's submitting a, or emitting rather, a quick enough pulse to trigger that bug we just covered. So if I stand here and right click, as you can see, we are still getting wheat plenty fast. All of the dispensers are triggering. Very, very nice. And the advantage of this is we can now build this flush in a wall. Look at that. That is amazing. Couldn't do that with this guy over here, but we can do it over here. And the reason, by the way, we have to have these blocks above the dispensers here is I've noticed this. This is really weird. I don't understand why this works the way it does. But if you have an observer and you try to run redstone down it, okay, so let's run a redstone signal over the observer, all right? And then I'm going to go ahead and grab a lever and we're going to power that. Redstone runs up the observer, but not down. If we put another block here, it runs up, but it won't run down. I'm not sure why. I don't know if this is considered a bug. Uh, glowstone and slabs have similar functionality, so maybe it's just running in line with their functionality. Um, but yeah, it makes things a little difficult, so you have to put these blocks on top because you can't run the redstone down. You have to run it in line or up, right? So that's why we had to do that that way. But this guy, much, much better. Works absolutely great. Tons of wheat. And it works, of course, with carrots and potatoes as well. So if we grab some carrots... Stand here, right click, boom, carrots like crazy. Carrots for days, right? And potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Uh, I'm not used to this uh, new 1.12 or 1.13 texture pack here. All right, potatoes for days as well. Very nice, I like it. Let's go build it in the bunker. All right, so we're here down in the bunker. As you can see, I did redecorate a little bit off camera like I said I would, and I did not mean to break that wall, my bad. Um, I didn't do a whole lot of redecorating here. I just replaced, you know, walls with wood, made it a little bit prettier. There's our exit, you know, and our entrance. I didn't redecorate at all because, I mean, it's the, it's the drop entrance, right? Like, why bother? But we'll probably be expanding out in that direction in the future. So the idea is to have stuff in the walls as we go down. So we're going to have a long ways bunker, if that makes sense. So that, that all is going to get redecorated uh, continuously, basically. So we're going to stick this thing in this wall right over here, right? All right, so let's go ahead and break this open here. All right, I'm going to break a couple blocks in. Give me some space to work with. We're going to backfill that when we're done. I want the farmland to be right there right so i'm gonna place i grabbed an empty bucket i meant to grab a bucket of water that is my bad i'm gonna place a bucket of water right there and our farmland's gonna go right there okay and then what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna place a slab right here we're not gonna do that yet um but the idea is that we'll stand here look down and plant our seeds right very simple okay so we're gonna need our dispensers we're gonna place one there we're gonna place one there and then we're going to place some redstone on that block back there, okay? And then we can place our observer facing that redstone very carefully. Just look at the edge of that redstone, right? No, wait, you can't do that because observers place backwards. And I hate that, right? So we're going to place our seeds, okay? And well, we're going to come around here. Then we're going to look at the edge of the seeds, and we're going to place our observer. Boom, look at that. All right, seeds already popped off. I guess it's too dark in here. <laughs> okay, so next, we're going to come around here. We're going to break the floor. We're going to place redstone on top of the observer. Right, and that's going to run into our top dispenser. Oh, you know what? I don't think the farmland was fertilized yet. That might be why the seeds popped off. Grab our other dispenser. Okay, we're going to look. See that outline right there? The edge of the redstone? We're going to go right up all the way to the front. 
Boom. Right click right there and it should place upside down. Okay. Very easy. Fix that floor. Okay. So we've got our redstone on the back. Redstone on the back here. And, and, and that's, that's, that's it guys. That's it. Now we just got to fill the dispensers. So let's go ahead and rebuild. Boom. Oh, you know what? You know what? If you got mobs turned on, I don't because I'm a cheat, right? So put a torch back here. Okay. There we go. Now it's, now it's bright back there, right? All right. So next we need some bone meal. Okay. We're going to fill all of these dispensers. Pro tip, if you're in creative mode, middle click with your mouse button. That's your middle mouse button, right? The scroll wheel. Click with that. You get a stack. Click again and hold it and you can drag stacks to fill the inventory. Okay. When I learned that, that was like an insanely amazing time saving tip. All right. So we got all our dispensers filled and now we're going to put that slab right there. And I lost my torch. What about, what, come on, torch, torch. Okay. We're going to put our torch back. All right. That should not light up inside there because this slab prevents light from going through. It doesn't look like it would, right? But it does. Okay. Cause smoking logic stand right here. The torch is kind of in the way now, isn't it? Torch up there. All right. Stand right here. Look down. Hold right click. Oh, where's my inventory? Come on. Let me do. I want to be able to see the wheat. All right. Let's see. Right click. Are you guys bone mealing? Dispenser. 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 Sounds like only one's activating. Place that. Place that. Oh, I see it activating. I think one isn't though. Hang on. Come back here. Are you doing your job? Are you doing your job? Oh, there it goes. I have to time your click just right. Your first placement. Let's see. New glitch. <laughs> okay. So the reason it wasn't going so fast, right? Now look at it. Okay. Now we're going. Now we're rocking. But if I place this block here and try it again, let me get, let me get rid of that wheat so we can see it. Now it's working. Okay. So just, just break that block and replace it if it does that to you. I don't get it. But I mean, we're relying on a glitch, right? So <laughs> that's to be expected, I guess. But now it's working. Now it's working. Okay. Okay. Makes no sense. But hey, look, it's fast. So there is our source of food here in the bunker because of course every bunker needs a good source of food, right? We don't have canned foods here in Minecraft. We have to generate our food on the fly. All right. So now we got potatoes, carrots, and wheat. Awesome. We're going to have to definitely get uh, some, some more different types of food here. We need a more uh, well-balanced diet, I think. So meat, meat is in the future, I am sure. But that's all for this episode. No. That is all for this episode of the Redstone Bug. I'm just going to stop swinging. I'm going to stop swinging. Okay? This is, this is, no. All right. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please click that like button, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and don't forget to ring that notification bell so you get my videos in your inbox because some people don't get them because of YouTube. Thanks for watching. No, this is the Black Belt Panda, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.